Hello and welcome to Prime News. Now look at the headlines. Major budget of important departments surrendered unutilized. 33 major departments non-performing. Government lacks control on budget enforcement. CAG exposes fiscal indiscipline. No mechanism for structural audit of buildings in state despite regulatory provision. JAR Commission recommends building audit following Ruby residency collapse. Government unclear over sand extraction says extraction by traditional communities allowed. District collector can give licenses but sand ban enforced following NGT's order. Governments flooded with RTI applications. In 2013, PIOs and government departments, semi-government bodies and colleges received more than 11,000 applications, 95% disposed. And government accused of confusing people over shifting of casinos. Government giving scope for casino owners to move court. Minister Mahadev Naik's loan fraud in Mapsa court. Now the news in detail. Government's budget plan and the department seems functioning out of tune. While 15 to 100 percent budget of almost 30 important departments is surrendered unutilized. The accountability of several schools availing state grants for salaries and maintenance grants is in question. Chief Ministers Harmal Panch Kroshi school two figures in the report. Government lacks control over the budget enforcement. CAG report while questioning such state of affairs has passed strictures on the lack of fiscal discipline. Here is the CAG's report. Incumbent BJP government could implement only 49% plans in its initial two years since 2012. The later CAG report has the answer as in why the budget plans and the schemes just remain on paper. Budget speeches have several big announcements. Finance minister take hours together for a budget speech. But the department have their own style of functioning, definitely not in tune with the budget. Almost 15 to 100 percent budget allotted to the important departments like the industries, municipalities, urban development, fisheries, animal husbandry, women and child welfare, police, few colleges, art and culture, mines, tribal welfare, health, agriculture, panchayat, information department is surrendered unutilized. In 2013-14, government had fixed a budget of 7,209 crores to the several of these departments, out of which 5,157 crores were spent, rest 1,904 crores surrendered unutilized. And here the CAG's observations. Instead of surrender, amount should have been reappropriated to the heads where excess expenditure was incurred. This indicates lack of proper budgetary control. There are several other departments who surrender less than 50% budget. The story doesn't end here. Look at the functioning of the schools that receive state salaries and maintenance grants and crores. Almost 50 schools have failed to provide account details of utilization of the grants since last 4 to 8 years. The name of Chief Minister's Panchakroshi High School two figures for no audit submission since year 2011. In this list, there are 20 minority management-run schools. Government is still clueless about the utilization of its salaries and maintenance grants of almost 22 crores availed by the schools. Interestingly, both the Zilla Panchayats are yet to submit their auditor accounts. And this is what the CAG observes. Non-submission of annual accounts by a substantial number of autonomous bodies was in violation of terms and conditions governing release of grants by government and carried additional risk of misutilization of funds. This time, state budget has crossed a 13,000 crore mark covering more than 80 departments. But very few departments like social welfare, PWD, tourism are seen spending close to the government plans. Rest are merely on paper. Predecessors CM spoke a lot about zero-based budgeting. But even after four years, the state of affairs and budget control hasn't seen any change. Not even a bit. Bureau report prudent. 
There is no mechanism to undertake structural audit of the buildings in the state. Jha Commission has exposed the state of affairs in the Ruby Residency Collapse Inquiry. It is known that despite a provision for a structural audit of the occupied buildings in the building regulations, the system is not in force. Jha Commission has recommended to Goa government to hold structural audit of existing buildings within five years of issue of occupancy certificate, which can be very much enforced without any legislative amendments. Watch this report. Ruby Residency Building Collapse claimed 33 lives in January 2014 at Kankon, leaving many others seriously injured. Several corrupt practices and flaunting of laws were honored during the probe. State government then handed over the fact-finding inquiry to the JAR Commission. The Commission has pointed out several faults and few measures government administration needs to adapt for ensuring structural safety of the buildings. As per the regulation of the Goa Land Development and Building Construction, Provision of structural audit exists in the building regulation, but not enforced. JA Commission has made few recommendations to the government. JA Commission recommends structural audit of all existing buildings within five years post-occupancy, proper mechanism for periodical structural audit. JA Commission has recommended process for remedial measures. Step 1. Structural engineer should obtain building structural layout plans from the owner. Inspection of structural system and layout plan, unauthorized alteration works that affect structure of building, identifying critical areas for inspection. Step 2. Structural engineer should carry out visual inspection, shall a certain condition of structure of building, type of defects, deformation and material deterioration. Loading on structure, deviation from intended use resulting to overloading, additional alteration works affecting structure. Step 3. If structural engineer does not notice any deterioration or defects, a report to that effect should be furnished to owner. Step 4. If structural defects are noticed by engineer, he should make a professional assessment of deterioration and recommend appropriate remedial measures including structural investigation. Recently, TCP Minister Francis D'Souza had hinted at a structural audit of all the existing government buildings. This was some building in the area. Sarkara Jewel and Private the audit Kerpaze, Okuncho the Rare Paula, Kuncho Modo Shakta Thoradepan, Sather Tremorella from Kuncha Modo Shakta, Kuncha, the soil testing room of Foundation Sarke Hagena, where I said audit Kurpada Majojana. Kuna audit Kerpaji Gara Zakaran Gide, then Zalapra and Mira Mulon Gaya of the Masters, out of the preventive steps in the Gopaza by the Gurjaja. And it will be across the state for government buildings as well as for private. Private and private sector to certificate our own. We'll tell them to get a certificate every five years. Senior reporter Lok Ishilkar for Prudent. State government seems unclear over enforcement of the sand extraction ban ordered by National Green Tribunal. Mines Department's reply to a couple of MLAs over sand extraction has exposed the confused state of affairs. While in reply to Vijay's question, government stated that the sand extraction by the traditional communities is legally permitted in the state and permission can be granted by the district collectors. While in reply to County's question, it says NGT has restricted sand extraction from riverbeds and is been enforced. Is sand extraction legally permitted in the state? The reply from Mines and Geology Department to the Assembly has raised several questions. After National Green Tribunal's embargo, there is ban on sand extraction in the state. But the state government's reply in the recently concluded session has created confusion about enforcement of the so-called sand ban. The sand extraction, which witnesses occasional raids by the revenue and mine officials, isn't an uncommon scene, especially in the Tiswari and Penne River Belt. The government's reply has added more confusion. Whether there is ban on sand extraction or not is a big question. The replies by the mines department to couple of MLAs seems unclear, leading to a confusion. The question by MLA Vijay Saddesai on whether extraction of sand is legally permitted in the state, the mines department's answer is a clear yes. Mines Department has referred to the circular dated 8 November 2011 issued by the Deputy Director of Ministry of Environment and Forest where grant of permission to the traditional communities of sand extraction can be permitted by the district collector. 
While Emily Rowan County had questioned the government about the National Green Tribunal's order on sand extraction, and the government replied stating, there is ban to extract sand from the riverbeds. It needs environmental clearances from the MOEF. Government also stated that it had filed affidavit before High Court in Suo Motor Petition, stating that constant vigil will be kept to ensure that illegal sand extraction does not take place. In another question by MLA Babush Monserrat, state government stated that there is no state ban on extraction of sand and laterite stone in the state. While the government clearly agrees that the traditional sand extraction is allowed as per Circular Deputy Director MOEF in the year 2011, it continues the occasional raids in the areas like Terracol and Amona, quoting NGT's ban and the High Court's directives. Despite a clear circular by the Deputy Director MOEF, the state in past four years has failed to frame a sand extraction policy, fix the zones and issue the licenses for the legal traditional sand extraction. Reporter Mahesh Gadi for Prudent. Let's take a short break. Stay tuned.